good evening. Welcome to the Business of Property. I'm your host, Cheryl Leong from Property Development Australia. I begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we virtually meet today and pay respects to the elders past and present. I extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples here today. At the Business of Property, we interview superstar guests in the property development space that share their expertise their deals and their stories to help empower, build and grow our community of property developers. So hello to everyone that's joined us today for Facebook land, LinkedIn and YouTube. Give me a shout out if you are here with us today. I hope you are all well. Please pop in any comments and questions for either myself or our amazing guests today. So this evening, we have David Klingman from Smart Planning and Design who is an experienced planning and design industry professional with over 30 years of experience in this space. David is absolutely passionate about the ins and outs of large scale urban development, town planning and urban design in particular, the planning and creation of smart cities, which is what we're here to talk about today. This topic is absolutely fascinating to me and I can't wait for David to share his insights and thoughts around our growing global population and cities and what that means for us as developers, no matter how big or small. So without further ado, I'd love to welcome David to the Business of Property Dance Floor. Hello, David. Hello, Cheryl. Thank you. Thanks for welcoming me to the dance floor. That's great. Dance floor. You've got the you've got the whole lighting. It's very much Saturday night fever there. Yeah, right. I didn't bring the mirror ball. That's okay. You're just, you're just missing the mirror. <laughs> I think it's actually right on on the side. Well, David, thank you for for being here. And again, I've mentioned to you many times. I'm mean, an avid reader of your your articles and blog posts around smart cities and I thought you know what people developers we don't think about that enough what does that mean in terms of planning what does it mean in terms of our wider city so I know that you've put a bit of a presentation together for us mm -hmm. and I'd love for us to be able to go through you know some of the things around what is a smart city what does that mean for us in terms of globally, right, these, this, this growing population and what that means for us globally and then as a country and then our cities and then, like I said, for the smaller scale developer, what does that mean? So mm -hmm. I'm going to hand over again the dance floor to you to so lead the way and I'm sure we'll have some questions along the way, whether it's for myself or um our viewers here let's get party started let's get cracking shall we well, thank you cheryl thank you for the, to the whole team and thanks so much for inviting me and to all the listeners and viewers and wherever wherever you are and however you are uh, out there listening to this um my name is david klingberg i run a company called smart planning and design we're a town planning and urban design company and we get people development approvals but i also have another company called Smart City Strategies and Solutions, which was born out of a, a strategic project I did in Vietnam. And uh, the, that project, a bus rubber transit design project, um, got me interested in this thing called Smart Cities, which is, there's a number of definitions out there, but it's really about where the digital meets the analog when it comes to city design and city planning and city Creation. So, without further ado, I'll get into the um, into the slideshow. Um, so, today's presentation or tonight's presentation, I'm going to introduce the smart city concept. What's it all about? It's all around us. I'm going to show you a case study, um, in, introduce the idea of smart city frameworks, and um, for the developers in the room and people interested in implementation, show you what's in what I call your smart city toolbox. And I think, Cheryl, if I'm wrapping up around about quarter to nine, is that right? That's about right. Yeah, perfect, okay. Sorry to have so, to hold, hold you back, David. I'm sure you can go <laughs> Well, like I said to you before, Cheryl, I run a whole day course on this stuff. So um, you get definitely getting the abridged version. So what are smart cities? Uh, I've called them the new urban fabric. Smart cities thinking, 
an application is weaving its way into what we do, how we work, how we live and interact, mainly for the day-to-day -day person through these things. But, you know, when you get in your car and you're told, where to, told uh, how to get to where you want to go, um, when you use any app to catch a tram, um, uh, these days, smart buildings, etc. It's it's everywhere. Um, what's led to the digital meeting the analog in city design? So what's the imperative? How it's entering the mainstream? What is a smart city? And how do we deliver our smarter cities for the developers in the room? Is really important. That's what we're going to touch on tonight. Smart. Uh, and smarter cities are here to stay. I got interested in this stuff about 10 years ago and certainly gathered momentum. Um, we can deliver better cities using a smart cities framework. And a takeaway message tonight is we really need to start to think strategically about smart cities, but about cities in general and applying um, the strategies and implementing the frameworks that will enable us to deliver better outcomes, not only for uh, local communities, but for the global community as well. Um, different places and cities can need to find their own definition of what's smart for them. Different places have different um, different uh, skill sets or different things that are more uh, inviting about them. We need to action those. Um, there's a strong legitimate role for developers, architects, planners, urban designers in delivering smart and more livable and more sustainable cities. We always have to remember it's about the people, the human scale. Um, the imperative is that global population is growing, where we've got now many, many mega cities uh, around the world. Asia is the most populous part of the globe. Humanity is now an officially an urban species. Um, city dwellers are expected to double by 2050. And the number of megacities will increase from three in 1950 to 27 by 2025, not too far away. Uh, just to give you a snapshot in the region, 83% of Indonesian citizens will be living in cities by 2045. Um, and that trend's gonna pose many challenges to the city administrators. So I'll just talk about the region, but you, you, can, go, you can go local with that statistic, more and more people moving to cities still. Sorry to interrupt you, David, and I know you've got some of this information in your slides. Mm -hmm. Would you like to scroll down to some of those slides? Sorry? Or would you like to scroll down to some of those slides or are we still sort of on the front? Oh, are you not seeing the scrolling? No, sorry. Oh. We might be on the wrong, we might be sharing the wrong screen. Oh my oh, goodness. I can see I can see your little mouse now. Can you see the slides? I can see we can see the slides, but yeah. it's stuck on the first page. It is on the first page. Yes. What about now? Yes. You're seeing that? I'm seeing that indeed. Okay. And if I go to slideshow from the beginning. Can you put it in presentation mode? Ah. Is that slideshow? Yeah, I've got it in slideshow. And if I go from the from current slide, can you see that? Yes. And that? Nope. No. Okay. Click, click from beginning. Yep. Yes. From the beginning. And and there should be something probably at the bottom that says, all right, I believe it's that little, little, little rectangle, well, little square thing down the bottom. The square, this, this one? Oh, this one. Bottom right. From the beginning? Yeah. That's all right, we can stay here and then you can just click on the individual sites on the left so we can still see your presentation. Yeah, can you see yeah. yeah. I think let's do that. That's good, that's good. Let's do it, let's, let's innovate. <laughs> let's innovate, shall we? <laughs> Absolutely. How we? How's that, can you see that? Much better, much now better. See there, 83% of Indonesian citizens will live in cities by 2045. There we go. 
Oh, I'm sorry you can't see the full screen there, people. Anyway, what's another imperative? Global warming and um, increasing consumption of energy, etc. How do we monitor that? Um, and if you're not interested in population change and you're not interested in, in, the, in uh, saving the planet and you are interested in money, there's a lot of money out there when it comes to governments investing in smart cities. So, you know, uh, there's, there's, there's dealing with population, there's uh, trying, to, trying to support a more sustainable planet and there's lots of money being spent in this stuff with the, in the delivery of infrastructure around smart cities. And so there is some statistics, but basically there's a lot of money, trillions of dollars being put into um, into uh, smart city infrastructure uh, and consulting. That is where the digital is being put into uh, into our cities. So what is a smart city? A smart city uses digital technologies to enhance performance and well-being, to reduce costs and resource consumption, and to engage more effectively and actively with its citizens. So key, se key sectors include transport, energy, healthcare, water and waste. These days for developers, uh, smart buildings is also um, uh, concierge buildings, smart buildings, dealing with uh, better lighting solutions, better, better waste solutions is all part of the key sectors of smart cities. And a smart city should be able to respond faster to city and global challenges. Um, Interest in smart cities has been motivated by major challenges, including climate change, as I said, economic restructuring, the move to online retail and entertainment, certainly uh, the move to online business and during the age of COVID, uh, aging populations and pressures on public finance, trying to find more efficient efficiencies in the delivery of public services is all, is all helping us head towards a more digital solution, more digital solutions for cities. Mm. So David, are yeah. we talking about, oh, sorry, we're not just talking about getting NBN out in Whoop Whoop. No, although that's part of it, for sure. Yeah, yeah. connecting communities is part of it. Mm. Um, no, it's, 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 it's any, it's any um, part of the urban environment where you can, implement and find a solution that is using the digital instead of the analog and how do we how we interact with that improvement mm -hmm. uh, and solution is what it smart cities is about um, so it's entering the mainstream uh, here's an old ad for Hitachi um, making sure that uh, lighting is better controlled um, obviously smart cars uh, bits of infrastructure going into our communities to power vehicles. Mineheart engineering firm has a smart city center for excellence in Singapore. Um, and what, in terms, of, in terms of the way we like to think about smart cities, or I certainly do, um, from a strategic planning perspective, um, one of the ways that we, or the way that I got into thinking about it was using a framework that we uh, researched and then improved upon. Now, so just to take a step back, a smart city in terms of implementing all of the solutions that are available to it needs a framework to think about the city and then to implement, um, implement solutions into that city. So the framework that I chose to use or developed up was uh, based upon a European Union, European Union definition of smart cities that broke the city into six parts a smart environment smart living smart mobility smart people smart economy and smart governance and if you think about it um, if you if you if you think about how you want to have a conversation about your city or your suburb you can think about your city or suburb or place using those six six mm -hmm. objectives or those six elements what we did as a practice as smart city strategies and solutions when asked to write strategies for cities was we grabbed those six elements and then we extrapolated them out into all how to thinking about how do we both analyze the place we're living in or the place we're trying to improve and then find solutions for it so we used 
those six elements and build what we call the smart city mandala. So you'll see here under smart environment, some of the solutions we could find were around, for example, smart green buildings, green energy, green urban planning. Under smart living, we can create more safe, livable places, more culturally vibrant and happy places, and more healthy places. Under smart mobility, we can start to talk about mixing modes of access. So when you are trying to get off the tram and catch the train and then get your Uber, how do you use data and technology to do that better? Um, prioritizing clean uh, and non-motorized options for transport. Um, under smart people, embracing creativity, uh, creating an inclusive society and, and improving education. Under a smart economy, getting more connectedness. And that's where, for example, uh, the NBN in country and rural areas is helping communities connect with marketplaces around the globe, for example, increasing productivity, increasing entrepreneurship and innovation, under smart governance, allowing for uh, more transparency and open data in government decision making and consultation, and also enabling uh, a better connection between supply and demand side solutions for governance. All of the time, remembering that cities are about creating places for people to live and be and be part of them. To so thrive. What, what is that image? That very uh, that, that, the one on the left? Yes. That's actually a, a graphic by um, uh, an architect called Le Cabousier when he was trying to understand the, <laughs> the relationship between the human form and space. Yeah, it's a sort of a famous image there, broken the, the body into uh, into uh, into into sort of fractions, I suppose yeah. you could call it. Segments almost. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. yeah. there you go. Um, so just very quickly, I'm going to I'm going to go through I'm going to go through each of those six elements just to illustrate what I mean and maybe get your 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 brain juices flowing there a bit to think about, well, if I'm a developer and I'm wanting to think about the place I'm developing, what are some of the things that I need to think about, uh, both in general terms anyway, but also as it relates to the creation and use of uh, smart cities and smart, uh, smart uh, technology? The first one being smart governance. This is a broad scale thing in a way. Um, but under the heading of governance, what we're trying to achieve is excellent participation in public life, great public and social services and open and transparent governance. What are the, some of the things we can do to deliver that? Using smart cities, we can have more transparent and open data. We, <clears throat> we can have responsive online government and decision making. We can have state-of-the-art interactive tools and online workshops. And we can have world-class education facilities and trainings. Training. Now, an example of this, on the ground example, uh, today I was at a, I was at a, a meeting about a, a, a land use, a development, a, a housing development store, um, and they were uh, the, the the team were talking about how the last consultation, fifteen people turned up, right? Fifteen people came to a consultation to talk about the growth of their city, and in particular a, de, a particular part of the development of their city. Smart cities, the use of data, interaction, interactive tools and the like can all of a sudden enable consultation to occur for urban development through for developers using that technology. So Cheryl, I hope you can see there, for example, all of a sudden you can start to have a broader conversation using, using smart cities and, and interactive online tools. Um, a smart environment. What are some of the things we're trying to achieve there? Sustainable environmental conditions, better air quality mon and monitoring, increased ecological awareness and sustainable resource management. What are some of the tools? We can have green energy planning and delivery, green urban planning and design, and green buildings. Examples of this are in, um, in this is in Singapore, the Housing Development Board have reduced the, co uh, reduced the cost and reduced the pollution of their apartments by better monitoring 
of their on their housing sorry i've made better monitoring of their housing and responding to peak loads etc uh, in australia we've got some um, companies that are doing uh, that sort of predictive an analytics in terms of design um, and enabling um, analytical analytics to lead design solutions in master planning new communities. Um, in smart, under smart living, what are some of the things we're trying to achieve? Places that are culturally and more economically vibrant, happier people, safer places and healthier people. What are some of the um, solutions there under smart cities? Um, delivering better quality housing, using analytic analytical tools and, and better uh, production uh, production methods, uh, ensuring cultural facilities uh, are known about and, and put in place, providing healthier conditions, delivering world-class and connected education facilities, integrating tourist attractions and services um, to, the, to, to a more global community and allowing global communities to understand what we've got on offer here in Australia, for example. Um, examples that, of where the digital and the analog meet. Um, this is an image from um, in front of Notre Dame Cathedral at its 500th anniversary. Now, you might think, well, what's that got to do with smart cities? Well, globally, the events that occurred in front of the Notre Dame Cathedral at its 500th anniversary was able to be advertised through digital interactions, which meant that a, glo a broader, larger global community could understand what was going on in the city of Paris in, uh, to celebrate the uh, 500th anniversary of the, of the cathedral. Now, imagine that at a more local level where you're trying to increase economic activity in your new development area and how you can use digital technology and new technology to um, celebrate the things that are happening in your area. Start mobility. This is one where most of us interact with the new, the new smarts. Um, what are some of the things we're trying to achieve? Better or more excellent local accessibility, a more sustainable transport system, and accessible and integrated IT infrastructure. What are some of the strategies we can have? Well, we can, at a very global level, we can develop um, and celebrate new connectivity with new airports and global connectivity through new uh, new airport hubs uh, that is using digital technology to both celebrate and design those places. Uh, developing world-class public transport networks, integrating uh, bus rapid transit and light rail, and, and celebrating comprehensive walking and cycling networks, letting people know uh, not only where they can go walking and cycling better, but also ha uh, how, what times the, the cycle paths are, or well, not times the cycle paths are open, but where they can go cycling, etc. All through uh, celebrating and interacting through your, through your uh, devices. Uh, examples of that in uh, in uh, Colombia, um, day, uh, cycle free or oh, sorry, car free days in the city uh, is celebrated uh, across the country now, and people get to know about that stuff through through the through the power of their phones and other data and interaction uh, interactive tools. Um, better design of um, transport infrastructure through what they call open data, and this is how I got interested in smart cities when I was helping. Uh, a company design a, um, uh, or a company that I knew was designing a bus rapid transport system in Manila, they did all of their data capture about the old system and how to improve and create the new system through open data. And they were asking people to uh, allow them to track where they were moving during the day and that enabled them to design a new bus rapid transit system for mm. Okay. Smart people, um, supporting lifelong learning, promoting um, more open-mindedness, supporting higher levels of qualification. So uh, that's really about celebrating culture and education, developing incubator and business hubs. I'm sitting in a co-working space here at the moment. 
they co-working spaces really only can have been able to come into play in a meaningful way through the through the solutions offered by um, apps and by um, by by data tools. So booking of meeting rooms, uh, getting after hours access, um, communicating amongst the community and the co-working spaces all happen through digital and data solutions. And then lastly, of the six, a smart economy. What are some of the things we're trying to achieve? Promoting economic, um, promoting a better economic image and trademarks, and that can be done down at the local level, celebrating the new place that you're designing and developing, or indeed celebrating the new building and giving it give it giving it some branding and putting out that branding and communication about that branding of that new development through through the internet um, not only that but there are now companies out there that are using smart technology to actually um, connect all of the people in the new buildings that they're building so if you now move into certain buildings in melbourne you become a member of the community of that building through that digital technology that 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 you're given at the time of moving into that place. <clears throat> also, you can use the uh, use your phone as a concierge as a concierge service to enable um, connect connectivity not only with the people that are in your community in your building, but also to, for example. Uh, uh, hire a trusted nanny, or um, get a plumber to uh, come to your come to your apartment, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, yeah, so there's, there, no, uh, there's no hiding, is there, David? There's, <laughs> but you don't have to opt in. You can opt out as well. But the point is that you, that it is a way of creating community that's actually becoming. Um, I, I mean, I know it. I through the people I meet through this sort of work I do. I've met many people now that are, or that, uh, that, that are that are connected in their buildings through these sorts of apps. Mm. Um, and you know, some people would argue it's not necessarily a great thing. Other people think it's a fantastic thing. But the one thing I do know is the companies that are set up to do this sort of work are actually um, mm. getting great traction in the marketplace. And I think probably moving forward, if you are a serious developer about building. Um, building your communities within your buildings and mm. selling space yes. in your buildings, then yes. that's something you're going to have to offer. Yeah, yeah. So at what point are we talking about people and microchips in their arms? Because that's a real thing too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think you'd be talking about it when people want it to happen probably. Yeah. We're not talking about it now, that's for sure. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Um, just... I'll, I'll, I'll um, gloss over this because the, the case study that I uh, use the most is the Newcastle Smart City strategy that I wrote for the Newcastle Smart City uh, Smart for the Newcastle City Council, um, and I wrote that in back in 2000 and, uh, 2016. It was adopted in 2017, and uh, we also um, my collaborators also worked on. Um, some projects in China, um, and it was that project that led to the creation of my company, Smart City Strategies and Solutions. Mm -hmm. So just to very quickly talk about the process we went through, um, we had an eight-step process. We assembled a great team. We um, had to use, we used the Smart City Mandala to both get an understanding of the city, uh, but also um, uh, so, so it's existing conditions in terms of uh, its 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 physical condition, but also its digital footprint, etc. And we use the mandala to promote and implement strategies to deliver improvements around the economy, the people, the governance, mobility, environment, and living. All of the six elements there. Um, so the first stage was assembly a great multidisciplinary team, get an understanding of the place, develop a vision and develop local drivers. We developed a number of objectives under each of the element six element headings. 
Um, we articulated a clear and concise strategy by identifying those objectives for each of those for each of those elements and under each objective under each of the six elements um, we developed a strategy for each one so on the smart governance manager strategy uh, strategy number one was um, providing digital transformation of e-services strategy number two was increasing access to open data strategy number three was promoting a collaborative city Strategy number four was um, putting forward the idea of digital citizenship, so allowing and giving people access, uh, no matter who you were, what age you were, to, to the digital platforms that were enabling the growth of Newcastle. Um, and at grassroots level, uh, providing money for startup-led innovations through co-working spaces and innovation hubs. So for each of the six elements, we came up with an objective, like I said, six objectives, and then uh, under each of the objectives, we developed a number of strategies. So under smart mobility, the objective was to create a city with connected technology enabled infrastructure for multiple modes of mobility that innovates towards future transport modes and prioritizes walking and cycling. It's a mouthful, but you had to get a lot in there. Um, so different strategies there, um, ICT integrated multimodal multi multi modal transport planning mm -hmm. strategy two promoting active travel strategy three uh, enabling future mobilities to occur and be developed so as you can see it's a very pragmatic um, methodology we use one was the first step is to understand the place what's deficient in that place and mm -hmm. how to improve that place not only what's deficient but what's what can we celebrate in that right and then yeah. through the lens through the lens of the and i'll get to this in a minute the potential toolbox of things you can deliver identify strategies apply the tools and create improvements and and this strategy is near, nearing the end of its life but it's been very successful in terms of uh, the hunter region and newcastle in particular getting a, a leg up when it comes to um uh, participation and economic development for that for that uh, for that place. Mm. Um, Smart living. That part around just going back back one slide, David, if you please. Future mobilities, integration of future modes of transport. What mm. does what does that potentially look like? Are we? I mean, we're talking about electric cars. I mean, that's becoming a reality, very much a reality now. And mm -hmm. mm -hmm. be mainstream in the next decade. Mm -hmm. What I mean, do you do you already have insights as to what other future modes of transport this might be? You know, are we? Is is this? So, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Like, like um, ride sharing, the the explosion in ride sharing, for yeah. example. Um, not buying a car, but actually renting a car. And what I mean by renting a car is renting. Renting, and I, I won't even call it a car, renting for a point in time, um, for a period of time, a mode of transport to get to where you mm. want to go. Mm. And, you know, booking it with your phone and getting it to turn up to where you are, you hopping in. It sounds like a taxi or an Uber, right? Yeah. But it it, 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 may be, it may be the case that there are hubs of cars or, or vehicles that are, that are that are positioned around your suburb and when you call it up it comes to you uh it it, it drives to you it picks you up you might find that someone else in the car with you who happens who the algorithms and the data has identified wants to also go somewhere on the route to where you're going there's an example uh another example of in melbourne at the moment there's all these um scooters e-scooters are around Right. So, and and it's not just the actual mode of transport, but for example, in um, in uh, in in Malaysia, uh, the ride sharing and and sort of the Uber type um, environment that's being created for getting around is meaning that there are places popping up in shopping centres where you wait for those vehicles mm. to turn up. So there's, there's not just a digital part of it. There's not just the transport part of it, 
but there's the physical part of it as well. Yeah. Um, another example, uh, which I'll get to in a minute, is the notion of um, having access, have, and I've done this myself in, in England, but you can do it here now. You can, if you have a car parking space in your front yard at the moment, and you don't have a car, you can use digital tech, you can use technology to lease that space out to people, right? So what is that going to mean for, what is that going to mean for car park ratios uh, when it comes to designing um, car parking in uh, multi-storey apartments? Because all of a sudden, using technology, the car parks that are in the unused car parks that are being that are in um for example a schoolyard on a weekend all of a sudden can become a place where people can park and get access to through technology and, and the like so it's sort of the, the what the way i've had it described to me is whatever you can think about you can sort of do these days or you can begin to do yeah. Thanks for that. Um, like I said, uh, objectives and strategies. It's a, it's a tool that we use, that I use in creating the places that we design and create strategies for. So each each one of the six elements has that has mm -hmm. that. Problem. And then we identified uh, a number of actions to ensure the delivery of those strategies, uh, and then we communicated that through interesting graphics and not only. Uh, identified the strategies, but also how we were going to make them happen. Um, and we talked about the council being a leader, a collaborator, and we gave time frames for the delivery of that. Um, just to touch very briefly on the idea of, a, of strategies, um, I talked about the mandala and the six elements. Turns out that across the region, different um, countries and regions are using this very same framework. So uh, Indonesia has a 100 smart city strategy, 100 smart city program to deliver 100 strategies for their cities and regencies, regencies being a, a region. And you'll see the same um, six elements there that they're using to design and deliver solutions mm. to their cities. In uh, Malaysia, same thing. Um, the six elements there, and then they group them under economy, social, and environment. But again, the same six elements. So there's a language that's been developed over the years to enable both the thinking about their cities and also the implementation of solutions in the cities. So you'll see here under smart economy, economic growth, innovative economic growth, equitable wealth distribution, and supporting entrepreneurship under smart mobility, efficient road accessibility, efficient public transportation, um, uh, under smart living, safety and security, housing quality, educational quality. So quite independently, different regions of the world and, and different uh, cities and regions of the world and, uh, are, are thinking about this stuff in the same way. Mm -hmm. Um, we, just to talk about the money side of it in Australia, this is just part of a list of projects being done by local governments or have been done by local governments um, across Australia in the last few years and the grant amounts that was... So the, the federal government actually gave money to local governments to implement, so to design and implement smart city solutions there. And you'll see a whole range of things like a smart city, uh, the Smart Beaches Project in Lake Macquarie, Smart Urban Irrigation Project in Cairns, um, a better connect, connected community in Goa, et cetera, et cetera. Some of the fun stuff, or I'd call maybe the fun stuff here, what's in your smart city toolbox? So what are some real life examples of things that are happening right, right now in our cities that is being implemented? So um, we, we all know it now, but a few years ago, uh, it, was, uh, it was something new, dif different ways of 
learning about your transport system and how to catch your train, your tram, uh, your uh, whatever else, whatever other mode of transport, your Uber, etc. Um, in Korea, amazing work done in Korea. The, this slide's really about um, the promotion of smart cities and the creation of um, uh, labs, uh, co-working labs and innovation labs to give a boost to the economy and smart cities has helped not only connecting people but being the way the IoT that stands for the Internet of Things, um, being the way that economic development can actually occur through thinking about solutions and then implementing them. Um, whole cities embracing the idea of smart cities, Amsterdam is consistently at the top of the uh, league table when it comes to both thinking about digital solutions and implementation of digital solutions. Um, codes, so if you think about um, the planning scheme in my day-to-day -day job, if you think about the planning scheme, there are codes of practice and rules to deliver um, uh, housing and development in the community. Likewise, with smart cities, there are codes being developed uh, in Australia and around the around the globe to implement smart city solutions, waste management solutions through uh, the 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 interaction of physical systems with data. So waste management, underground waste management systems, leading to cleaner, more efficient um, cities, uh, and also creating a new businesses through um, highly efficient recycling, et cetera, smart lighting um, and the use of light poles to capture data, including movement of people. This is the thing I was talking about, curb parking spaces for rent in East Perth, so people renting out and making money from the car parks that are in the front of their houses, for example, because that car park can become an asset that people can then rent. I did it in the UK. When I was in Oxford looking for a place to put our, no, it was in Bath, it doesn't matter, in Bath, looking for a place to park the car. I, I parked my car in someone's front yard and I paid them money to do it, just simply through an app. Um, I then, remember getting charged money to park on someone's driveway. <laughs> yes, right, exactly. <laughs> um, yes, smart, smart city dashboards. Um, is is a uh, is the way of the future for cities so being able to visualize different functions of the city and how that city is performing and giving access to the citizens of that city um, uh, about the data and the way where how what's happening on a day-by-day -day basis where is the best place everything from where is the best place you see here this is for izmir in turkey where, where, where are the pharmacies open to um, where are the most accidents occurring in, in that city at, at any one time? Um, and different dashboards. This is, this is a little video that I won't show. This one, though, is interesting. I'll show you this one. This is um, Smart City Jakarta. I'll see if this works. Can you hear that? Yes. Yeah. So this is their city dashboard. Hi guys, gue lagi di Jakarta Smart City. Mau tahu itu apa? Gue ikut gue. So, kenapa ada Jakarta Smart City? Goalnya adalah menggunakan teknologi IT agar pemerintah dapat lebih baik melayani warga DKI. Ini ruangannya. Apa aja yang bisa kita lihat? Yuk. So this is about waste management where you can report waste in the streets and they'll send out crews to clean it up. Bisa lihat harga pangan terupdate dari pasar-pasar di Jakarta. Informasi sakit, bisa lihat jumlah kamar kosong. Jadi, 
kalau ada pasien yang mau dirujuk bisa dicek dulu APBD di sini bisa lihat anggaran so here's statistics about the city um, Uh, access to hospitals, so I'll identify which is the best hospital to go to at any one time. Um, so you live data about the city, how it's performing, but also access to services around it. So just imagine that not at just a city level, but these days at a building level, right? So you can you can start to create real communities of like-minded people or, or, or place, um, promoting your 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 uh, your next development, for example. And I can see some councils doing doing elements of that as well. Um, like I said, the reporting of if there's issues um, with damage along the street or whichever, I know there's an app that I can click on the photo and council mm. hopefully send their crew out. Yeah, we so in, in Germany, question. sorry, sorry to not, yeah. David. there's a question here, I think it's from David, another David, why does Brisbane City Council not support rooftop gardens when it can satisfy efficient use of space? I don't, I don't think it's just Brisbane. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Do they not support rooftop gardens? Uh, I That's don't. A good know. question. I don't know. Do, I don't does, know. But I don't. I don't know a lot of councils that support rooftop gardens. But, but I don't. Think I they, don't know I don't, what a rooftop garden is. Is that is that is that on your? Is that on a flat roof where there's a garden with well, access from the? Uh, access from a stairwell or stairwell I'm, I'm assuming yeah hmm. I'm surprised um, they don't support rooftop gardens put it that way no, no. <laughs> I, I, I suspect there's a whole lot of different safety safety issues around that as well yeah um, rooftop so in general, I'll just just talk about the um, talk about local governments like Australia is a bit lagging behind if you look if, if, in Germany for example What they've done is they've put a heap of sensors on their waste trucks, okay, and the and the the sensors can tell where the where the potholes are developing in roads and where the cracks are, right? Mm. And without any intervention through algorithms, the as the trucks drive around the cities or the villages or whatever, um, they're sensing where the gaps are beginning to show, and mm. instead of in the bitumen. And instead of waiting for someone to, to report it, the data tells their, um, their either their contractor or their, their, their depot to go at their straight away to fix the thing up. Mm. And of course, if you leave those potholes to uh, get worse, they get worse, right? Mm. That sort of makes sense. It, yeah, stupid thing to say, Dave. But my point is, If you leave it too long, it costs a lot more money to fix if you leave it than if you get to it straight away. Mm. So it's saving cities collectively millions and millions of dollars because the, the problem isn't allowed to uh, get worse. Worsen, worsen. Yeah. Another question here. We've got a few more questions coming up. Are smart cities more an element of being environmentally friendly or does it also include use of other tech technology? I think inherently smart smart cities are more environmentally friendly because, because um, you know there's that old there's that old adage if you can measure it you can improve it. Right. So, and it, apart from mobility, the the trends that I've seen that drive that drive um, mm. the implementation of smart solutions is the uh, is the environment. Uh, is the environment people wanting cleaner? So that list of projects, for example, um, that, that the federal government gave money to local governments for in that list for Launceston 
was to clean up the the, the water quality of the Tamar River. Mm. And that was their one project they got money for, and it was ridiculously successful because, like I said, if you can if you can use use the monitoring tools and the technology and the data capture and collection and then um, and, and and then and then uh, and then um, respond to that information quickly, you can. It's inherently good for the environment. Mm. So I've got another another comment here. I think in France or one European country, it's mandated to have rooftop rooftop gardens in all commercial buildings. So yeah. we're all those about French, the rooftop. Buildings. Those French are good, right? They're good. They're good at doing stuff like that. Absolutely. So they've got very I'll, green cities. Yeah. And, and and you're right. We we're we're a bit slow in implementing that in Australia. My question is, and I think all of this is 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 really great to learn. For you know, you, you the next slide's about what's your own smart city solution for particularly the smallest, small to medium scale developer. Mm. How can we actively or practically apply? these elements into our developments because i'm in my mind i'm thinking it needs to be uh, from from a at least a a state of you know it needs to come from federal you know the state and and then the government. Like how much of an impact can a small small or medium developer have in implementing or actually utilizing this in planning their own developments i think huge i think i think it, it depends on where you are which point of what point of view you're coming depends on where you're coming from right so i could ask i could i could um it, let, let's say i was i was coming at it from this from the, the supply side i i.e. asking myself the question, I want to supply housing, I'm a developer, I want to supply housing, and mm. then asking myself the question, where do I where do I supply that housing? Mm. Mm. There are lots of there are lots of uh, even realestate.com now, for example, but uh, websites like or tools like land data, um, even uh, I know for a fact the, the Aussie home loans website i believe gives you access to data to make better purchasing solutions right that's that's at yeah. the front end right once you, and, and and you know where demographics are changing right um the abs data is now now online and you can access that easily but you know there's there's data sets out there that make that help you make better buying decisions for example once you've bought and you want to build a um, development, depending on the scale, even from small to large, I talked about these guys that are now, these companies that are now providing apps to not just create communities within buildings at a larger scale, I'll get to the smaller scale in a second, but also to make buildings more efficient. The, the, the saving, like the, the savings the the uh, the annual savings in in power usage and water usage uh, over time and over time is huge. So when you're thinking about doing your development, ask yourself the question under the heading of smart environment, for example, uh, or smart buildings. What are the things that I can easily afford that in the future will well, if I'm hanging on to this property as an, as an investment and a, to rent out, will actually reduce my energy costs over time. Mm. Yeah. The other thing is to remember that it's, it's and that's at the large and small scale, right? Um, use the, the mandala, the six elements, to ask questions about what can my building be like to make it better than other buildings? 
if you're that way inclined, right? If you want to, if you want to find the solutions to create better places and better individual buildings, use the mandala and the six elements to to ask the questions of your suppliers, for example. Um, now that might cost you a little bit more up front, but it might save you money in the future. I don't know. Um, and then I know for a fact certain developers use these apps and the and the the the, the, the concierge apps, uh, the connection apps to to be it to as a marketing tool, not a marketing tool, but to as a as a point of difference is what I'm trying to say. Um, so this stuff touches on on many uh, levels and at different points along your development journey. I think. Mm. Yeah, that make that absolutely makes makes sense. Mm. So wrap sort of starting to wrap wrap this part up, particularly with this question around what's your own smart city solution. Tell us tell us what this is about. Oh, this, this is really just the methodology we use or would use if someone came to us and said we want to do a development. Um, what are the, what's the, what's, how, how do we build this stuff in, right? So well, I would, I would, and I apply this methodology to not just individual sites, but to whole cities or regions or whatever. So the first question is what's your vision for your building? What do you want to achieve for your building? What what do you what do you want to use this smart cities stuff for? Then I ask, then we then we source the different technology, the tools in your toolbox. So this is the toolbox, waste management, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, all the things that are in the marketing brochures around different cities. Are you going to build a code for your community or your building? What are your expectations, etc.? Smart lighting. I, I'm literally going to ask my one of my clients, do you want to build in the ability to have um, rentable parking spaces because they're yes. in mooning ponds, right? Yeah. So it, it can be a it can be a, um, a revenue generator in the future, mm. for example. So just to get back to this. Then, so what's the vision? What's the what's the the menu of technology we have available to us at the moment? Then thirdly, pragmatic application. So okay, so that solution is going to cost too much. It's not going to give us a return on investment. We're going to not going to use that, but we might use this other solution. So pragmatic application and then delivery. So that's the process we go through um, to deliver solutions for people. Yeah, and that's it really. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. <laughs> I hope that was uh, got you thinking about the future, or even now. Actually. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I love personally. I love master plan, master planning, or the idea of master plan communities, which you know you do start with what's the vision and what it is that you're trying to achieve and then build all the elements in it like you said you got to work out is if it's viable whether it's feasible but mm. when i think of master plan communities i'm all i'm always thinking about the sustainability side of things mm. and also mm. the, the sort of the the technology you know whether it's electric cars with electric car charging stations mm. um potentially driverless cars that like you mentioned before mm. being able to book and things like that mm. but i'm often thinking of it from a like i said a master plan perspective where you almost have a, a clean slate to work from but i like that that's not necessarily the case to be able to create smart cities because i'm originally from malaysia and so to be able mm -hmm. to see things like malaysia or indonesia implementing these smart city solutions is really cool because often I think, and I've, I've, you know, I, I didn't grow up in Malaysia, but I've visited Malaysia many times. I often think it's a little bit chaotic, <laughs> and these cities are chaotic. But in a in a sense, they need these solutions to be able to manage 
that growth. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. Things I mean, more in Indonesia, as a case in point, is way, way ahead of us in terms of creating a s strategies for those 100 cities. Like those 100 cities have now all got smart city strategies for them, right? Yeah, wow. And, 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 and you, what, what's the driver is the, exactly the thing you're talking about, which is this massive population growth and urbanization so they can't they can't not do this stuff mm, mm. Right? so and 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 what's happening is that they're sort of leapfrogging you find this with technology um the the, the solutions are leapfrogging the traditional solutions we had so for example um you know having to having to walk or you know, having to walk or, 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 or for for two hours to, for two hours to go and pay to get your new license because everything's on paper, mm. right? Has been uh, uh, go governmental solutions are now being wheel, uh, wheeled out. It's the wrong term to to people at a fast rate and very efficiently. Right, so I haven't described that very well, but my point is that um, through the strategic approach to delivery of smart cities, they're they're actually doing a, in some cases a better job than we are um, because of those population pressures, etc. Mm. And the so government getting behind it. Yeah, and, and so anyone in in government watching watching this, uh, you know. I, I would like to think that spark, it sparked a bit of, of, like I said, that thought around on a local government level, how can we be creating smart smart councils? How can we be creating mm. smart suburbs, particularly when there are new suburbs being created? We're, mm. you know, living in, we're, we're seeing all these rezonings that are happening and all these you know, new suburbs being rolling out, rolled out. But I, I sort of think there's not enough of that smart city planning in those suburbs. That well, you, have I got um, two minutes to talk about that for a sec? Two yeah. minutes, yes, okay. of course. So, so some of the some of the problems we're facing with housing in growth areas is occurring because of a, and this is happening in Armstrong Creek in Geelong. I know this for a fact. The local government can't keep up with the provision of infrastructure to sites that are, that would become developable sites if the if if the sewerage and energy uh, connections and water connections were there, but they can't keep up, right? So, what smart cities and smart digital technology could allow for is, for example localized service provision of energy and waste infrastructure that would take away the reliance on state and local government to do that right yeah. um, so and the point I'm making is that you can there are there are through local solutions if you've got a big enough catchment the ability to bring places online quicker, to yeah. help solve the housing housing sh shortage, if there is such a thing, right? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, so, and that's what they're doing in Germany, for example, local combined heat and power plants and what local waste management plants and local energy plants are being built um, to service local communities. Yeah. And the, the scaling of it to the local as opposed to a broader scale, which is the model we've got here, is now more possible through these solutions. Thank you. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. And uh, definitely a lot to think about. Like I said, even as, a, as, as small or medium-sized developers, there are lots of elements of what you've talked about that you can implement. Um, mm. 
got this sort of final comment here. Love to see our city using smart city planning to alleviate social problems in our yes. community. Yes. 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 Exactly. Absolutely. David, it's been an absolute pleasure. And I know that it's something that you could definitely talk about for hours and hours. And then I know we've, we've chatted about it before. But if anyone is interested to reach out to David and talk about, you know, your smart city plan, if you are working on something that would, you would like to be able to implement one, you know, one or many of those elements in that mandala, please reach out to David at smartplanninganddesign.com. Is there an AU on there? Or there's, there's no. There's no, there's not. There's no AU. .com. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for being such an amazing guest. And you absolutely um, <laughs> you proved me wrong, you did, David, because I was like, how are we going to get through 100 slides? And, and you made it. And you absolutely yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Have a lovely evening, everybody. Um, Great. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining us at the Business um, of Property. Make sure to visit and subscribe to my YouTube channel and search Cheryl Leong and subscribe where you can find all our past Business of Property videos. And if you found value in our show, I appreciate if you could subscribe to our channel. And if you like, hit the like button. So until next week, take care, everyone. Stay safe and we'll see you again on the business of property. Bye-bye.